That's the real magic of the movies. Thunder, lightning, blood, fire, religion. Help! Someone save me! All in one film. That's director proof. That's why I always want man around. Black and white. Nothing wrong with your screen. Do not adjust your set, as we say. These are scenes from Mank. It's a new Netflix movie about the man behind one of the most famous films of all time. Many have it as their number one, Citizen Kane. We're not talking about Orson Welles. Herman J. Mankiewicz. He wrote the script. And Mank is the subject of the latest film from director David Fincher. It's on Netflix as of today. Gary Oldman getting a lot of Oscar buzz for his leading role. Well, all of that is the build-up for Eli joining us to talk about this. Nice to see you, Eli. Good morning. Nice to see you. What's the story of Mank? You know, before I tell you the story of Mank, I need to give you some uh, homework, Heather. You cannot watch Mank without watching Citizen Kane, the 1941, as you said, black and white masterpiece by Orson Welles, because Mank is all about Citizen Kane. Mank is about the man who wrote the first drafts of the movie that you're seeing right now, the ingredients that inspired him to tell this grand arc of an American life. Now, back when I was a wee lad in film school, we were shown Citizen Kane in class and it's presented like oatmeal. Here is one of the greatest movies ever. Watch it. It's good for you. But I watched it again last week. When you look at the classic shots from the political rally, there are so many reasons to watch this movie, the way it's influenced movie making in general. But don't listen to me. Don't listen to the top 10 lists. Listen to this man. Take a look. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Orson Welles. I'm speaking for the Mercury Theater, and what follows is supposed to advertise our first motion picture. Citizen Kane is the title, and we hope it can correctly be called a coming attraction. If the red carpet had a voice, it would sound like Orson Welles. Listen to that poise, the charm. This is the young man that RKO Pictures hired to make this movie. He was a radio star, a theater star, a director. He was Brad Pitt and Steven Spielberg all rolled into one, which is why RKO said, make whatever you want, Orson, as long as you star in it. And not only was Citizen Kane a technical tour de force that changed what we thought could be achieved on screen, but look at it there. It's an essay on the American condition. Hmm. It's a screwball comedy. It's a political drama. It's a tragic tale of a man ebbing with ambition, consumed by pride. It is more than Rosebud. You have seen this a hundred times. You just don't realize some of your favorite films are already quoting it. That was exactly what I was going to say. I have but one word. Rosebud. And <laughs> we can remember, I saw it once, but I think I want to see it again, as you've told us why we should be watching it. Okay, now that we have that in our mind, yeah. that's the backdrop. We've done our homework. Where does then Mank come in? So what David Fincher, the director of Mank, has done is created like the ultimate cinematic love letter to Citizen Kane from the opening shot of this film, which is in black and white, the camera shooting to the ceiling, just like Citizen Kane. You can tell what he's doing, the references he's making. And yet this movie is based around the lowest creature in the Hollywood food chain, Herman Mankiewicz, the screenwriter. Take a look. Hello, everyone. Make yourself to home, Mr. Mankowitz, or shall I call you Herman? Please, call me Mank. 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 This is Herman Mankowitz, but we're to call him Mank. Mankowitz. Herman Mankowitz. New York playwright and drama critic. Turned humble screenwriter, Mr. Hurst. This is a business where the buyer gets nothing for his money but a memory. There you go. Gary Oldman plays Mank as an amiable lush slurring his way into high society. He's a frequent dinner guest of the tycoon Randall Hearst. He goes on long walks with Hearst's mistress, Marion Davies, played by Amanda Siegfried. And yes, he gets hired by Orson Welles to write this sprawling script about an ambitious newspaper publisher and goes slightly mad trying to accomplish it, stuck in the desert with a typist and his drinking problem. Let's take another look. What I want to know is what you think of it. It's a bit of a jumble, the collection of fragments that leap around in time like Mexican jumping beans. Welcome to my mind, old sock. Him, I get. But what did Marion ever do to deserve it's this? It's not her. Not all characters are headliners. Some are secondary.
our secondary. Oldman has great fun with this character and the zippy script based on a screenplay written by David Fincher's father. Now, the book that inspired all of this, Raising Kane, suggested that Mank never really got the credit he deserved for Citizen Kane. Now, that's debatable. I do not have time to refute it, but the best parts of Mank show that the real-life characters, the tycoon, the mistress, were much more multi-layered than the portraits captured by Citizen Kane's final cut, a fascinating rumination on the multi-layered meaning in movies. Three and a half stars Ooh, out of five. That's good.